Well, good morning, good Tuesday morning. Happy garbage day. It is good to be back. For many of you who knew, uh, I was out this last weekend. I headed out to California to see, uh, Rachel and I went out to see our son, uh, Josh, at his uh, parent weekend. And the wonderful thing was that we were able to take our mothers with us. So it was parent and grandparent weekend and had a marvelous, marvelous time. And in that, I want to say a big thank you to uh, Mr. Tim Merritt uh, and as well as Dylan Zoak, our newly called DCE. Uh, and all of the things that went on this last weekend. We had uh, the Galley Ringers, we have Otis there. We had so much stuff going on and it was neat to be able to uh, live stream from a distance, but I still gotta say live streaming for me is still never a, an adequate uh, replacement for not being here. It's a way to stay connected, but it's also, uh, boy, made me long for one to be back together with everyone as I will this next weekend. So uh, I wanna say that uh, as I was gone, a number of things were going on, but I wanted to share with you a little bit of devotion today based on uh, my, my travels. Cause you realize when you're flying on uh, airplanes, uh, a couple legs out, couple legs back, um, and movies have not been made or anything that's been on the airplane has been made for a long time. All it's have to do is watch live TV. And live TV is usually MSNBC, CBN, Fo CNN, Fox, and all those. And so it's national news coverage, which I have to say, I don't watch very often. And there's a reason for that. Uh, boy, all these things, all they can talk about is how horrible the world is and how things are falling apart. Whether it's uh, hearing and watching about the, uh, the um, things that took place up in uh, Wisconsin and the, the trial right now of, uh, of Kyle Rittenhouse and the riots that took place up there and all of the devastation, destruction, or whether it's the things going on with schools or politically, uh, boy, there's just so much happening. And it makes you start to get really worried, scared, like what's gonna happen here? Um, Lord, are you not in control? And why is so much chaos and fear going on? Well, today's devotion is a little bit about that. A reminder for us, and I'm gonna try to step into an area that I don't always step into, is uh, re uh, sharing a little bit about my family. And I don't mean I don't always show my family, but uh, uh, in a different pers perspective. So today's reading comes from Mark 13, verses one to eight. It's our gospel reading from this last week. And it says, uh, as he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, see that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name saying, here am I. Or they will, sorry, they will say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines. But these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Here ends the reading. Now, there's a number of things that are going on there that reminds us of all the terrors and things that we see, even though we might say, wow, things are going so well right now. Other times we might look at them as I did on my airplane flight and realize things are going great. I'll see family, I'll see my mother, see my mother-in-law, see uh, my son, uh, be able to enjoy all the amazing things of his college. I mean, we, it was a beautiful place. And yet all the way there, all the way back, even more down there, seeing and hearing about all of the fearful, terrifying things going on in our nation, inflation and all of the um, woes of the, um, uh, what do we call it? Uh, the the uh, ports and all of the supply chain things. Um, I guess we watched back here and saw someone uh, at the Port of Baltimore saying how the supply chain was going so well. And yet when you're out in Long Beach or near Long Beach, you see all container ships out there and you see all the things stacked up, you realize it's, still not going very well. And you think, well, what's going to happen? Should I worry about Christmas? Should I worry about gifts? Should I worry about food? Should I worry about toilet paper? Don't do that. That was the beginning of the pandemic. But no, we're reminded with all these things going on, that these are all the results of sin in our world. Remember, we have a, a sin taker for us, right? The garbage man, Jesus. Uh, but with this, we, we see all this. And instead of becoming overly worried or anxious, we're told to look at them as birth pains. Now, that birth pains, this is where I'm going out of my, my uh, I guess you say, out of my range a little bit, because we have three kids. I say we, 
only one of us gave birth. That'd be my wife, Rachel. I won't forget the first uh, child that was born, Josh. I remember that uh, we were all excited. We were new to be parents and we were going to the birthing classes. And the day that we were supposed to go to the birthing classes, the night before, her water broke. Oh, almost six weeks premature. We were scared and anxious to get to the hospital and they were worrying, no, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. We'll give birth tonight because her water broke and you don't let things wait. Well, a number of days passed. She remained in the hospital and Josh did not come because he wasn't ready to be born. Well, oh, day after day after day, I was anxious, she was anxious. There was a lot of worries about infections and other problems that might come. Plus with him being so premature, maybe his lungs weren't developed yet. Well, through all that worry and anxiety, her doctor returns from vacation. He's very upset that, that she had not delivered, that they didn't try to encourage us long. He'd rather have a, a, an, an unhealthy baby out of the womb than, or than, than an unhealthy baby in the womb. And so suddenly they gave her this thing called Pitocin. Now we've learned a lot about Pitocin. I learned a lot about Pitocin through her. If she wasn't ready to give birth yet, well, the Pitocin really helped it along. And within a matter of hours, here came Josh. Now that was a very great day of joy, but those hours and days before it of her being in the hospital, uncertain, we had not gone through any parenting classes of what to expect there at the hospital. We're filled with tremendous anxiety, worries, not really sure if Josh would be healthy, not really sure what would happen, not really sure if we you know, were ever gonna be able to make it out, if she'd be able to make it out there in a healthy state too. There were so many worries about the, those days, those times. And yet, when that Saturday evening came and she finally gave birth to our firstborn son, it was a day of tremendous joy. Yes, of course, he was whipped off to the NICU and he was in the NICU for only a couple of hours because he was a very good size and very good length and very healthy. And yet, even in the NICU when I was visiting Josh, I spent uh, probably a good hour up there next to and consoling a, a father whose son had been in the NICU for two days and things were not looking very optimistic, watching nurses go around and touch all the 24 children that were in that NICU just so they would have some human touch. And I realized even amidst the joys and the worries, uh, you also still have the, the reality of sin. Now that's what we have in our world. We have the reality of sin. And that's what Jesus is referring to here. When we look around the news, we watch all these things on TV. Even our travels, the joys to see my son and my mother-in-law and my mother. Um, we're still reminded that the things around us are just temporary. That sin and death and destruction still reign supreme. And fear and worry can dominate our lives. Now I have to say here in our text though, that Jesus says these are all the birth pains. They're not the death pains, they're the, the birth pains. They're leading up to something that is good, like the birth of a child, like the birth of Josh for Rachel and I. However tiny and fragile it is, and even in the pain and the worries and the anxieties, we have joy and gratitude. Now when Jesus talks about suffering at the end of the world, he describes all sorts of terrible things. He describes earthquakes and famines and wars, and he says, this is real suffering and there's still more to come. And yet he calls it the beginning of the birth pains. The birth of what? Well, the birth of what comes after the end of the world. The new heavens and the new earth that God is creating. The cosmos as it should be. You know, God's kingdom fully visible and touchable. You know, that place of all of our hopes and dreams filled with all of God's beloved children. And that includes everyone in humanity who have been named and claimed to the waters of baptism, who have been given that relationship of faith by our Heavenly Father. Those who have been healed of their sin, just like you and I have, healed of the evils and grown into the fullness of being children of God. You know, so we live each day in hope, looking forward to what is going to come. And when we are in that new heavens and new earth, following the birth pains that we experience here, that will be a place where God will wipe away every tear from our eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. The labor will be ended and the new life begun. That's what we have to look forward to. That is our hope, that is our assurance, that is our joy, even amidst the fears and worries and the, the news that's going on, very real, very painful. 
very worrisome that we have a hope in what God is creating for us in the new birth of new heavens and the new earth. So live your day today and every day in hope and in joy, enduring the pains and the worries, looking ahead at what is to come. Just as new expected parents will be looking forward to the new arrival of their child, so too we should look forward to the new heavens and new earth, the new joy of being with our God. Well, that was a devotion I wanted to share with you today. Hopefully that brings you some encouragement, some hope, some, some joy, some, um, some encouragement. If you're watching news like I was kind of forced to do on uh, many hours of flying, then you'll be able to see that and say, you know what, Lord, I know you have much better things in store. Keep me, Lord, from being overly overwhelmed by all of the pains and the struggles and worries and help me to be overwhelmed by the joy that is before. If we can, let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Dear Father, as we suffer, as we worry, as we, as we have anxiety, as we are, Lord, surrounded by fears and sin and evil, help us to hope in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for joining me for the devotion this morning. Uh, this is a very busy week, and we got very busy weeks to come. We have our last worship at home tomorrow night for this year of 2021, because following that, we have a Thanksgiving Eve worship service along with all sorts of pie fellowship, uh, which was really fun. We love that. And then the next four Wednesdays after that, we get into the season of Advent, a season of time of preparation for the joy and celebration of our coming Savior, the one who came and the one who will come again. Fits very well with our devotion today. And so uh, make sure that if you're able to join us in person, awesome. If you're not able to join us in person, take advantage of our live streaming and uh, participate with that. Um, and then looking forward to our Christmas Eve services, just like last year, 4, 7, and 10 p.m. During Advent, we have meals before and after. Uh, it's going to be, uh, uh, well, a joyful yet busy and uh, very, uh, very, very fun time with our family at Galilee. Have a very blessed day. Know that I love you and aloha.